think we legit we rolling so just what's up we're back uh, on the podcast here not so much about philosophy we're talking with jackie terry and another actor someone i act with troy bennett <laughs> hands up hands up right, right, <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> so troy what's your uh what's your history and expertise because you bring a little expertise to this movie set right you got a, a lot of experience in the uh what should I say you're like a criminal mastermind or something <laughs> I, would, I wouldn't say all that i mean i uh I, I went to school for acting you know i actually uh was doing it in middle school i had an acting class in Paseo, and uh uh fact uh, acting has been one of my greatest talents you know i always had a a passion for acting so when i saw jackie terry doing it a few years back, you know, I just seized the opportunity and got on with the acting, and now I'm here today. Took advantage of the opportunity, man. Um, he, he took advantage of it real quick. As soon as I stated to him, he, we start setting up dates, and we did our first movie, Deadly Connections. And I can say one thing about that movie, it looked so fucking real that people really thought, you know, th this transaction was really going down. <laughs> and uh, we made it high believable. Until now, this that movie is still a classic. Like that's I, the one. That's the one you got beat up in, right? No, 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 no. no. no this no is no beating up. One of the first movies we came out with in 2018, man. And it was so savage, so real. And can you explain to him what that movie was about, man? Basically, Deadly Connections was basically a skit about. Uh, it's, it's one of them short mini series. Basically introducing my character as the gun plug. I'm basically on a phone call with one of my gun dealers trying to get some more guns. And uh, in that process, I'm getting a buzz from Jackie Terry's guy, uh, Cecil. Man. And uh, he basically calling me over and telling me his operation. You know, his guys are going to the top. And he got some people that's beefing with him. And mm -hmm. he needs my assistance. So uh, I basically was telling the inventory I had. Showed them what I had, basically, and that's what Deadly Connection was about. And then, with that one movie and, and other mini series, we was able to come out with a few, few of our own uh, hits. I, I, I can say we had what Fresh Out, oh, the comeback, legendary. We, we had a lot. We had Coach a, Will. Coach Will. We did some of that too, even though that really wasn't on the savage side. It was more on. Uh, inspirational you know uplifting you know it's basically overcoming alcoholism and and basically being a boxer you know being on the top like he once was so getting back there and basically overcoming adversity so that coach will was pretty nice matter of fact i think we got another one coming in the works this year so be on the lookout for sure for sure so that's good news <clears throat> <laughs> <laughs> That's good news, bro. I'm thinking about. Fuck the other guy. You know, I'm always trying to analyze things and like trying to figure out, you know, basically try to get down to the core, like what's really going on in society. That's why, uh, yeah, you know, that's why I made this podcast and shit. So like, man, I see you guys playing around with these guns a lot. I'm like, man, where does that come from? You know, is that what y'all, that what y'all were doing when y'all were younger? Is that still what y'all doing? Well, it's, it's real life, man. You know what I'm saying? Is it, like, is it real life or is it a game? Fuck no. Well, no, you know, shit. this is this is real life, you know. Life, what, what we bring on that movie set <sighs> is what most people do in real life. You know, the struggles <sighs> in the urban community, right. you know, it's hard because, you know, you're so oppressed. And you, you want to take it out, but you don't know who to take it out on. So you take it around. You take it out on people around your environment. So you get you know these gangs which is just a group of people or friends that come together and so solidify themselves as a group and whatever operations that they do or whatever they do this that's on them but basically i guess the main object is to get money you know and then also with the culture in the rap game you know these you know, this misguided youth they follow this and they just uh they just try to adapt to it it's like the culture is the scene is they try to make it a norm and if you don't abide by these standards or rules, then you consider it a goof or corny or lame. So it's an expectation. And even though it's sad, but that's what our culture really does. And 
one one of the things we try to do is uh stop the violence. I know where I'm from, off of thirty seventh and Prospect, you know, I think they got a community group out now and they said stop the shooting and I was seeing something that they was doing last year, so you know, as we're trying to get the crime race, we're trying to move on to something better. Uh, we'll be trying to come out with projects to basically redirect the the youth's vision. Instead of looking at guns and drugs and, you know, glorifying those things, we're going to try to have some type of alternative to the culture. And with that, that should put our foot in the door. So. Exactly. <clears throat> I don't believe you. I don't trust y'all. <laughs> I never have. You see, I got my own problems too, see. <laughs> I came back from the military, PTSD. and I got a little, I got a few screws loose up here. Right. That's why I joined law enforcement, and you know, I, I feel the same type of pressure. It's like a, it's like there's a, there's a different type of oppression in the military, right? They they oppress your individuality. So I come out, you know, I come out trusting the law and everything, and trusting the system. And I see people like trying to fight the system and not following the rules, and it pisses me off <laughs> to the point where I got I got to make a change. I gotta I gotta make my own stand. I mean, do you guys do you guys ever sympathize with the cops in that way? You guys realize our struggle? Uh, not necessarily. I mean, uh, it's it's both ways, you know, when you look at it. But at the, <laughs> I, at the same time, when I look at a cop or a past cop. I don't feel safe. Not you know, I don't like if a cop gets behind me or anything like that, I don't feel safe. Man, you know, you know. I really don't. I, fuck dude. And the way they the the way they look at us, the common uh black man, you know you know what I'm saying? It's just yeah. like like damn, we're already labeled as fugitives. No matter how we dress or how they it's very judgmental. Mm -hmm. And um I just blame that on the training system, a lot of the media, everything that's just going on. I think uh, the fear, fear controls a lot of things, and I think the cops they do fear us, you know. But I've been see, I've been around you a lot, and I know we've been we talked to a lot of cops, bro, and they, you know, they let us go, they didn't hassle us, but but I understand, like you always got to have that fear because if you're just in the wrong situation, yeah, man, and you know they they suspect of you, right, then. All kind of bad things could happen. So. Right. Well, this, well, when we were out and about with the cops, I was doing my professional career, you know, with the camera and whatnot. And, of course, you know, but I'm thinking more like if I'm by myself, you know, in the car or anything like that, you know, it's, it's always a sense of uh, sense of nerves. Like, damn, is this motherfucker going to pull me over or anything, you know. Yeah. And it's just, ugh. Yeah, police, man, uh, you know. Uh, the way I look at it, you know, it's a job, you know. And when you go to work, you got different employees. Mm -hmm. You got good cops, you got corrupted cops, you got asshole cops, you got all different types. Uh, it's just another institution, you know. And, you know, I, you know, it's probably tough out here for a cop nowadays, especially with the George Floyd killing last year. And, right. you know, cops leaving the force and things like that. They're even more paranoia because when they have a little traffic stop they don't know if they're gonna get shot or not so you know they already on edge and mm -hmm. trigger happy so one false movement or you know something that ticks them off then next thing you know you know things can go south you know and um very true. it's 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 very rough you know and you know we understand the cop situation because it's just a job but that's what they swore in to do so protect our streets so the, i mean you know, I would just think that if you got to look at it this way, you know, if you're getting pulled over or anything like that and you know you're not riding right, you know, you already know what to expect, you know. The, the last thing you want to do is give yourself away by arguing with the police because you're already making his job, his or her job harder than what it needs to be. Furthermore, they'll be a dick to you, and then next thing you know, you at a position where you don't need to be. What about what about the narcs, bro? I mean, I play I'm playing a narc in this movie, and so is Jackie. <laughs> like we're narcotics cops, right? And it's been known that some of the narcotics cops are actually selling the drugs. 
they running they're helping run guns sometimes cia even yeah. and fbi so like so what do you do when you find that corruption bro do you try to take them down yourself or you just trust like the judges and shit to take care of it uh <clears throat> stay out the way as what i would say because you know it's already rough out here being an african-american male so just to see something like that and and say if you know some information, you want to go to the law enforcement and report one of their fellow employees. Who's to say that that person you're reporting to is not on that team? So, and then they can, you know, kind of restructure it to where you're more of the criminal rather than the victim or witness. Right, they can flip it. And they can flip it any way they want to. So, you know, when you see stuff like that, uh, just avoid it. You know, that that's something you can report it. If you want, but I doubt if they really take it serious because, as you can tell, we need some type of reconstruction on how to train our police officers right. just to do a better job of what they're doing now because, you know, any little thing could upset them or they could be having a bad day and then just take it out on our fellow citizens, you know, and we don't mean no harm. We're just trying to go about our day. So, you know. Exactly. It's, it's just rough on both sides. It is. Uh, well, you were down there when we were filming the protests, and you just seen the frustration of the people of Kansas City, and it's just, it's just crazy, man. And uh, my question to you, Troy, is uh, what I asked many people at the protests: How safe do you feel around a cop? Oh man, I mean, little to none. You know, <laughs> if I can see a way to get up out of there, I'm out, man. I ain't, I ain't sticking around for none of that because you know. You, like I said, you don't know what's really the psychological level of a police officer. Right. You know, so it, last thing I want to do is look at, let them look at me and look at me like a suspect or something. Or, oh, he's up to something or no good and be stereotyped and judged. And next thing you know, they end up taking doing something to me that's wrong and I had nothing to do with anything. So right. that's definitely, I wouldn't, I don't feel safe around police, you know, because they so edgy now. You know, if they was... Really about, you know, protecting community. You know, right. we, we would be able to have our neighborhood watch back together, come as a community to report crimes to them because we feel safe and secure. We scared to call them because if anything were to happen, nothing. right, they come in a situation Ain't where it could have been a possible shootout or anything. They just see, you know, black people with guns. So everybody is subject to get killed the way they look at it because they life's in fear. Granted, None of the guns is pointing at them, but we know bullets have no name. So, right. with that being said, you know, they, they'll draw their weapons, tell you to put yours down, say one time, and get the busting. And then, also, you got some of these alt-right cops and people that's anti-black, you know, anti-minority, you know. And, you know, they out here, that to them, that's just giving them a reason to kill us. And we don't want that, because that's, that's all bad. So, I, you know, police, I don't feel safe around them. You know, as cops, you know, we try to do the best we can <laughs> while cracking you a couple of skulls at the, at the time. <laughs> well, we, well, I kind of see in this uh, footage that's playing right now. We, we all know the outcome. Man. My question to you, both of you guys is uh, uh, psychologically, you know, tapping into these both, both of these characters in general, they're from two different... Uh, worlds exactly and my thing is just tapping into those characters playing this role where you're literally saying the n-word and you know all types of shit everybody's against the police the police are against like, you you know what was that shit like bro psychologically and you guys did such a good job that this footage is legendary well i i know uh first off jackie kept telling me to say the n-word so <laughs> I, I was like, wait, let me think of some lines. But he's like, no, no, no. Just keep saying the N-word. <laughs> mm, right, right. So my, 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 my dialogue is kind of limited in this video. But, you know, all I try to think in my mind, like, it's just a power play. And the cops, they try to be as powerful as they can so that they can walk home at the end of the day, you know, unscathed themselves. And they got to put down a beat in, like, you know, they're thinking of a power play. It's a struggle. And all the time, it's a fight. And, you know, the only, the only criticism I could say of our police departments is that we might not always be fighting for the right cause. 
And we, we might often look at uh, you guys as our enemies, but, you know, at some, at some point, if we come together, we become a lot stronger. The question is, who do we come together against? Like, I heard uh, somebody say the last time people were really strong and together was uh, 9-11 and anti-terrorism. But at the same time, like, not everybody's united on that. Uh, I certainly am not. Um, but yeah, the, the racism, you know, I've been mentioning racism to people quite a bit lately. And yeah, the, the fact that we all banded together against that race, the Islamists, that, that made us strong at a certain point. But you and me as, as cops and robbers, like cops and robbers don't really have anything to come together on, which I see as our biggest struggle. Well, like you just said, you know, um, it's just uh, not not necessary. Robbers are bad people, but just cops in general. You know, uh, there were many people at a, a protest that just have just flat out been victimized just by the police over a simple traffic stop or just anything. And uh, these were people of all races, all colors. And it's just sad that you can uh, go to a protest or anything and there's no, nothing good to say about the cops are on how they handle situations. Even on TV, we, we see this all across the United States. There's always just, uh, you know, something. And like I said, we got to put ourselves in the cop's shoes, too. And they have a very tough job as well. You know, they're constantly uh, dealing dealing with us, you know, dealing with people in general. And that can um, do something with the psychology of it all. It can. So it's just a form of balance, but they know what they signed up for. To protect and serve, not beat and neglect, you know? So uh, they have a job. They're getting paid for it. We're not getting paid, you know? We're not getting paid to get killed, you know what I'm saying? Right. So uh, that, that's our biggest thing. Um, they're, they're getting a paycheck. And um, when they do commit a crime or anything, some, sometimes it's washed under the rug, too, you know? They don't get the same penalties as the civilians do. Right, because, you know, they sworn in to protect, and mm -hmm. but they serving, you know, serving the government. You know, I like to look at them like gangbangers, you know. If mm -hmm. you gangbang for the government, you know, I know one of my uncles, he was in the military. And he tried to get some, some of our relatives to join the military, you know. It's like, man, you ain't doing them with your life. You want to be out here and be a thug and a gangster, you might as well... You know, gang bang for the military. You can be locally like a police officer or internationally like a military, any branch. And basically, you know. That's what, that's what Kaepernick said, too. Yeah, that, that's Makes all sense. you are. You just Makes basically sense. gang banger. So, yeah. So when you do some or if one of their own or to commit some, a crime mm -hmm. that they know they're breaking a law, breaking a, a law, you know, that stuff can go get swept under the rug, right. you know. Because it's really one of their own, almost like a union job, yeah, yeah. so to speak. Makes so sense. It's, uh, I don't know, they just got to do a better better job on their processes and stuff, especially prosecuting one of their own. But then with having that, it will also decrease, you know, I say crooked cops, but you don't know how certain situations might turn out, you know. So, you know, I'm also, I got a philosophy from uh, neuroscience where I don't like to tell people what not to do like you know like you can't just say let's stop the killing without um without because it doesn't really trigger a change in someone's head when you tell them to stop something like even kids like uh so what's what's what helps what works better is giving them something to do telling them do this so i think like we gotta i think we should have more ideas as far as what we can do um so, for example, like having uh, that day, like, I, f I forget what it's called. You remember they had like a picnic with the cops and some of the citizens in one town, like the George Floyd town or something like that. Maybe, okay. it, was, maybe it was around Breonna Taylor town. Yeah. It was one of these towns where some, one of those bad things happened. Um, I think, I think if you do get involved in that community organization, like that we should do more things like that. You know, because everybody's stressed out. We all got so much work to do. Right. We don't have time. And that's another thing. Like, we don't really have the money in our community to, to try and organize things like that. 
No. And the thing is, when we was at the protest, we were expecting some of the cops to, you know, be on our side a little bit or just take a stand or feel simply or empathy for what we are fighting for. You know, George Floyd got killed in a vicious way and they were silent. And I think that's what most of the protesters were mad about because of their silence and they weren't standing up. They were still protecting one of their own. So that's what really got to everybody. And it's like, damn, whose side are you really on? You know? And my thing is, how how can you bring the cops and the people together when the cops are steady silent about these killings and uh, everything that's going on in America, they're they're steady silent. You know, and it's like, damn. Even if a couple of them just stand up to the corruption, it could change, but I don't see it happening because, like Troy said, it's a union. They they have a secret oath. And uh, you know, I was watching this movie the other day because uh, I was studying about this um, communism thing, <laughs> like we were talking about. There's this movie called The Experimenter where they conduct these experiments on people, and he had them like flip this switch that electrocuted the guy on the other side of the wall. I don't know if you guys heard about that. Very well known experiment. But like some like. 70% of the people kept flipping the switches to more powerful, more powerful shocks till it was basically sending them a fatal shock. And people would do it just because the guy behind him in the doctor's suit told him to do it. So, like, there's so much to our psychology where it's just, it's just hard to be an independent person. That's why I'm, mar- I'm wearing my military uniform here to show that, like, look, I, I agreed to become part of a system. And the cops do it, too. They agree to become part of this law enforcement system. So no matter what their bosses tell them to do, they feel like they put themselves in that situation. They chose to carry out, no matter what kind of bullshit laws, ruining people's lives over marijuana like they did for the last 30 years. You know, but they do whatever they tell, whatever they're told to do, whatever their superior, if he tells them to shoot a criminal, you know, a it's just part of our job. Like, don't worry, I got your back. It's like a puppet. Like they do what? Yeah, they become puppets when they become part of a bigger puppet. system. Right. And they're victims in in themselves. They just don't really know it. Sad. <laughs> <laughs> it's sad. This, well, that, that's why we make movies like like this. You know, just uh. I think your character as a racist cop really brings enlightenment to to people because it's like, damn, the, the, this guy's really talking like that. And there's cops really out here that fucking hate, you know, that are very racist just like this. And then there are good cops like Megan, the character Megan and Tutu were playing that, that want to put an end to it. So, you know, I, I think um, what we do as actors is very powerful. Because uh, we're able to say a lot of things that can actually, we could get away with it because it's a movie. But actually, we could build that realism to the fact like, damn, there are cops. And people really like this. You know, when you look at Fresh Out, it's like, damn. Uh, even the game bangers and shit, I'm like, damn, none of them are, you know, none of them are necessarily good people. Though. All they care about is money and, you know, mm-hmm. you know, so... Not, not the game makers are the cops. They're, none of them are really good. <laughs> but they clash. <laughs> That's what I got out of it. <laughs> Shit. What do you guys see happening in the next four years with Biden? Fuck. Everything being passed. <laughs> no, I'm just <laughs> <laughs> Right? I mean, they got the house and the, the Senate, so there really is no excuses. Um... Uh, he can be asleep in the Oval Office while they have a stamp with his signature on it. No, passing no, shit. No, you know, <laughs> Joe. I don't know, man. You know, it's it's always pros and cons, no matter who's really in office. Right. So I mean, you know, they might ban marijuana, but on the flip side, they might be trying to take guns away. So it's like, <laughs> I don't know. It just it just really depends on what's their on, what's on their agenda. But uh, President Biden, hopefully he can get this country to back on the surface. You know, we were kind of drowning there, especially with the pandemic, with the loss of jobs and stuff like that. Right. These stimulus packages are, are helping, but it, we all know it's not enough. So, um, 
hopefully we can get our jobs back, create more jobs, and get our nation back rolling. You know, that's really the main goal, and try to help one another. And hopefully, you know, Democrats can put something together within these four years and right. really help out, you know, our citizens because we are in need. I know I was I was talking to somebody else or like uh, several months ago about the vaccine. I told them, y'all, the vaccine. There can be a vaccine coming. And I said, <laughs> I said, what if, uh, what if Trump? You know, I asked a bunch of Republicans, like, what if Trump tells you to take a vaccine? Will you do it? He said, no, nah, he won't. He won't do that. And I said, well, what if he does? They said, no, nah, he won't. He won't do that. And that, to me, that's the reason they put Biden in because they know. They know they wouldn't expect Trump to do that. They couldn't get Trump to do that. But now they got Biden in there, and they know Biden will do that. He'll, he'll enforce a vaccine. No, I don't know about enforce, but I think he would encourage, you know, the citizens to take right. vaccines. But it's not going to be, like, mandatory or anything, but uh, voluntarily. Not unless you work in, like, the medical fields or somewhere you directly work with people and sick people, right. you know. Deucey and Stone, bro. What the? Where the fuck did they come from, Jackie? Well, I just needed uh, some more cops in general. It just couldn't be bad cops, so I needed two good cops to kind of be the antagonist to the, you know, bad cops. You know, so uh, of course they're they're not racist, and they totally hate racism. They hate what you did to Trey Nine. They really hate that. So uh, to kind of get them more in the character, I seen them. I showed them. Uh, which you actually did to <laughs> Troy, you know, and, the, oh, yeah. and they were just very emotional. They were like, what are you doing to that guy? Why are you? And they, so some of this is actually like real kind of emotion, you know, like even when you walked in the door, they're like, remember we walked in, they're like, you motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But, um, but yeah, you play your role so good, man. You're such a good actor. Uh, you and Troy, but the way you play this racist role, man, um, I, I had a lot of people come up to me like, man, you did it, you know, you got to <laughs> held your own on this, and I, I, I can't thank you more than enough, for, <laughs> you know, that's me, you know, shit, because can't everybody do it? No, I don't uh, want any accolades for this one. <laughs> I don't know, you did a good job, man, because a lot of people are scared to play racist roles, you know, and, uh, and I'm like, man, this is real life, you know, this is real life, and, uh, you, you took control of this character. And uh, and a lot of people need to see this because this is how it goes down. And there, there's a lot of cops like this. There's a lot of people like this. So, uh, <laughs> kudos they, to you. Did they die in the end, bro? Because they're really bad cops. They, they don't beat anybody up or try to shoot anybody or anything. Well, we got to wait for part three to figure that out. But I'm pretty sure it's going to be like... Uh, some type of animosity between us and you know a lot of shit's gonna go down. I, th I think I, I think I might just shoot one of myself, bro. Oh damn! <laughs> oh, okay. Which one would you shoot, Tutu or Megan or both? I think I shoot. I shoot them both probably. <laughs> damn! They don't deserve to be on the force. Oh shit! Now this is uh, Officer Luna's talking right here. <laughs> oh shit! Well, um. We'll put that in the part three where you guys have a shootout. He, he, he might not get a chance, you know. You know, Trey Nine going to be coming back for oh, revenge. Yeah. So. Trey Nine, You got Trey Nine coming for revenge. He, he got too much coming at him at once. And Smiley, too. Shut John up. Davis, he's coming. <laughs> the more that beating. Right. That, that's coming. You need that ass whooping, Harold. Right, you, it's going to be more than ass whooping. Stay tuned. I'll be right there. I think my character needs to die, too. So it is what it is. But these movies are a lot of fun, and oh god, look, look, look at the body language, you know. Oh, the kickstand, the kickstand was down. Oh, yeah. really? <laughs> Everybody saw it. Oh, shit. <laughs> that motherfucker break? Nah, it just, it just scrapes. <laughs> look how you just roll off, and they're still just looking hella pissed. And I like the fact that they do look like real fucking cops, you know. <laughs> Yeah, you found some good actors here, bro. Oh, yeah. They're, and, um, well, they'll also be back in the Society Part 3 we're going to shoot. Meg actually got me this coffee mug. Oh, I need to check out the Society. Is that pretty good? What is, oh, what is that, what is that dude, about? Awesome. Man, that a little brief summary. Dude, uh, society is a group of uh, demons. 
So there's there's like three demons all in all. Malicious is X-Ray's character. He's like the main demon. So what Malicious does is find people that are just hopeless, have no hope, who are fighting their own personal demons within their self. Because in reality, sometimes people who are down on a look, depression and suicidal, they're easier to manipulate. Right. So Malicious, he has a lot of money. He has a power. So with that money and power, he recruits these kind of pathetic people which are going through the struggle. So my character, he was homeless at one time. Yeah, nothing. He had lost everything. So one day he was sleeping on a bridge. He wakes up, sees a back jacket full of money and a phone number. It's malicious. So he ends up corrupting um, my character and uh, he gets all the money and, you know, he feels a sense of power. But there's one thing about the society, though. You have to sell your soul. <laughs> you have to sell your soul in order to gain this power from malicious. Mm-hmm. Fast forward to Romero's character. He's the second person we find. He's in an abandoned vi- building screaming at the top of his lungs about God knows what. But he's going through some shit, you know. He, he's possessed. You know, he's fighting his own personal demons. Once again, I go in there, talk a little shit to him. And uh, malicious comes in. It makes him offer he can't refuse. And... Uh, he ends up becoming part of society. One thing about these demons, they uh, have psychological powers where they can get into a person's head and make them see illusions that aren't really real by doing this type of thing. <laughs> yeah, and my, you know, they asked me to tap into to my own personal demons mm-hmm. in the filming, so I, I thought of us being trapped here. You know, it's been like... Uh, you know, I feel like we're on in in this realm. And we're trapped here by something. We're being held prisoners, basically, on this planet. Mm-hmm. And uh, maybe maybe they're demons or, or I don't know, reptilians or something. Right. But uh, you know, there's a lot of people who who feel the same way. They don't know about who's really in power on this earth. Is it really just humans? So uh, so I try to come up with this idea that yo, know, if I can have your power, Malachi. And I can create more people with with my power, mm-hmm. and we can create an army to fight these demons. You know, it's a it's just a fun concept, right? Very deep. Uh, a lot of people have gravitated toward it, especially toward the end. They're like, "Damn, this is this is deep." These cops who are searching for us, they think we're just normal guys until the story goes a little bit deeper, and then they realize these motherfuckers are crazy, are possessed. You know, they're like. What the fuck is what are we getting into? But it's really it was really fun. I like the second one with the, uh, your sister TT. Yes. Because uh, I go to this like cabin in the woods and I actually possess her. It was the first time we <laughs> did this, and man, it was just it was just fun. I love that. You know, I like the shaman, the like, voodoo. I love stories about voodoo and right. uh, possession, even like demonic possession. Even Constantine, like that movie, uh, Keanu Reeves, I think it is, where he's like, he's following demons. He's like an exorcist guy. Yeah, I like the exorcist. So I think that was the coolest part of the movie where I'm possessing your sister. Yeah, I think everybody liked that part. It was just, it was just so fucking deep, you know, like it was in the middle of the woods and she stops at a restroom and. You know, it's a, I, I think the acting was superb in that. Like, it, it's that segment alone in that movie that just draws people deeper into yeah. your character. And uh, Because the way you directed it and edited it, <clears throat> you can really tell, like, she's seeing these visions in her head. Yes. And, like, I remember as soon as she opens that, the door or the bathroom stall, like, she's being called in there or something. And she opens the door, she just stands there, like, staring. And then she can see herself. Like, it's really... Yes. I like the way it portrayed. Well, it, it, a form of schizophrenia, too. You know, uh, a lot of people uh, who suffer from these uh, seeing illusions, uh, whatever you want to call it, PTSD. I mean, this shit is real. Yeah. What's yeah. up? I pulled it up for you. Okay. That's real. Man, Troy, so you got a lot of big things coming on, man. How do you like... Just being an actor, and you got a 
you starting to venture into the rap game too. We're going to the studio on Friday. So, man, what do you got to say about all this, man? Just uh, doing what you're doing right now, man. Oh, uh, man, I'm just stepping out, going on to the new scene. So, going from the acting to performing. I try to be an artist out here. And uh, basically, I got the Sergeant film, the little series coming through. And I uh, make my own soundtrack and music score for that. So, I got a lot of work to do. And I'm, I'm very excited. Very excited for the opportunity. So this is where she's in the restroom. <laughs> well, a lot of people see this movie now, Romero, and they're like, oh, "Damn, we look so different," you know? Like they don't understand we filmed this years ago. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You see her body language, like she's hearing things. She's actually hallucinating. She can't get the door open. Kind of like what Romero was saying at the beginning, we're trapped. Yeah. She's trapped in her own reality, her own illusion. And I like I like how you titled it the society, bro, because this mm -hmm. this really is our uh, our our kind of subconscious depiction of reality. Yes. It's like we all see we all see that we're trapped, kind of. Mm -hmm. That's some creepy shit. She opens up the door and. Shot. Oh, yeah, what's this? <laughs> oh, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> Damn, is that what she's looking Oh, shit! <laughs> what the? F right? <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, my goodness. I know, right? That shit is crazy. She's at this complete state of paralysis. And now that this is what the control we was telling you about, Troy. Start possessing her now. He already has her trapped in the illusion. Power malicious gave us. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, how would you know, man? I was watching the, the Manchurian candidate earlier. He go he goes to talk to this like doctor, psychologist dude. And he asks him, you know, can they really like brainwash you and put an idea into your head? And like, how far can they go with that? And he goes, you know, like there's all these, there's all these theories about microchips that can go inside of you and affect you or the fucking 5G we talk about all the time now that can manipulate your brain. He said, no, that's all, none of that's really real. He said, but there are some things that they could do, like implant a memory into you. But fake memory or what? Well, it involves like electroshock. He said they gotta they gotta put electroshock onto you and then repeat repeated images and suggestions. And uh, and then he goes, you know, how would I know if that happened? And he goes, well, how do you know you're actually here and not still over in Kuwait where they're brainwashing you? It's like, you know, how do you how do you know you're not being? influenced by any type of illusions of the mind at any time of the day how do you know your thoughts are your own right makes sense definitely makes sense that's like it's like society beating you down like with these ideas. Then we all be just become lost little slaves to this fucking demon demon master over here. The master of illusions. That's true. The world is one big illusion. Who knows what's real and what's not? You create your own reality. Land, but who knows 
like, holy shit, the, the image isn't there anymore. You know, it's gone. She doesn't know if it's real or not. It's like Fight Club, too, another one of my favorite movies. <clears throat> he talks in the beginning about how, you know, he blows up his apartment and shit. Right. But um, he talks about all these magazines that had him brainwashed into thinking that this this is his perfect he's building a his perfect life you know and this is what it's gonna make him happy having all this ikea furniture everything just right in his house and this is why that's why he blows it up he creates this alternate personality so he can blow it up so he can destroy the illusion that he's he's created and he realizes that his life he's not really happy with it the only way he's gonna be happy is if he like blows up some more shit <laughs> So he blows up all these credit card buildings. What the fuck? But he's trying to free everyone. Cause he, uh, you know, he talks about talks about how we're all like, you know, trapped. Well, Tyler Durden says it. His alternative personality talks about how we're trapped. We have uh, we have these religions where, you know, my invisible. What does he call it? My invisible friend's better than your invisible friend. <laughs> we had these financial systems where, like, you know, we're fighting so much for the power of, of America and the U.S. dollar. But the, the money is just an illusion. It's, like, fake, basically, anyways. But on there, they're having God we trust. So we're... When we follow the money, we're following God, too. It's another religion thing. And I hear all these, like, Republicans. Um, you know, a lot of the stuff I say, like, oh, yeah, they sound pretty smart. But then at the end of the, every podcast, they go, uh, in the end, God always wins. And I'm like, and they say, that's our motto. I'm like, man, you know, you say that even when you lose? I don't know, it's just a game. It's an illusion that they choose to believe in. Form of control or what? Oh, for sure. Hmm. Form of control? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Controlling the mass. Right. It's almost like when you try to break free of that control and you say something that you're not programmed to say, everybody labeled you as insane or crazy or mm -hmm. kill that guy or, you know, but in reality, it could be the truth. Right. The truth they don't want us to see or know. You know, the truth hurts. Man. People are scared of the truth, though. Yeah. Because they've been leaving alive for so long. You know, it's like it comes conditioned to them. Deep down they, inside, they know it's a lie, but. Psh, man. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because, you know, with the religion, you know, it's like. It's like. The things they tell you not to do goes against human nature. So that's why you find yourself always having a struggle. I guess you would say spiritually. It's because you never could get right, but you also know that you're human, and as humans, we do make mistakes. Well, in that essence, you always feel some type of form of guilty conscience. And you know you're not supposed to do whatever it is that you're doing because it's not of the biblical law or the book, the Bible, etc. So you try to do whatever it is that was written in the book, and you try to have some type of lifestyle like that. Mostly people... Is really in the religion because they in the belief of an afterlife, you know. I like to tell people this is our heaven, you know. You know, you're going to have bad days, but just know those are temporary. You know, just look at the better days. You know, if you know you're going to be resting in eternity, or I should say basically dead for eternity, you might as well have the, the best life possible, have the most fun, you know, as you can while you're here, you know. And, you know, it's, it's so lovely here, you know, people, they can't believe this is it, you know, but as long as you reproduce, you know, and you have some form of you here, you will always be here. So, uh, yeah, with that religion thing, it's, it's really definitely a control, 
control thing because like i said people believe in it and you know if they go against it or anything that's not of like in their eyes is evil you know and so with the devil and stuff like that i i remember when i was in college i was looking at i was in this history class and um when the pilgrims came and they was colonizing the land when they looked at the native people here they said that they were devils you know they was carrying rituals well in actuality the rituals they were doing was dancing and uplifting in their spiritual realm and, and since they didn't understand that they judged them and then they genocided them people oh they said the same thing about black people when they come over doing the boogie right it's devil devil music and stuff right because it's not a form of the white or you know of the privilege so anything that goes against that is not going to be uh praised not unless somebody from the group or the group collectively likes that and they basically inherit whatever skill or asset that is and then say that they did it or they're the ones who mastered it or whatever the case may be so Definitely makes a lot of sense. Definitely makes a lot of sense. People fear what they don't understand. You know, if aliens were to come down here right now and wanting fucking peace or anything, I think we will somehow create war with the aliens because we don't understand. Yeah, you know, with the alien thing, man, just like zombies, man, there's just too many loopholes to believe, you know. Right. With aliens, why, what's the point of an alien talking to a human? You know, and another thing, you know, I, I wish I could start this human lives matter group because I don't think humans as a species really know what they're doing. You know, they say we kill a dog nowadays. That's life in jail. You know, what the fuck? that's murder. Yeah, that's Nigga, what you doing more time than you did if you killed a human. Nigga, fuck that. Yeah, life. What? So in reality, when I look at nature, besides the systematically Shit. designed institutions that are in place today. If you just look at yourself in the wild, you know, if it's between you and that dog, I'm sorry, but that dog getting ate, you know, on some real shit. Right? But, you know, but if we kill it or it's something, that motherfucker try to attack us, we kill it, you know, I got to go to trial for murder. What? And, and try to figure good. out a way to get freed off or, you know, the, the, the least involuntary manslaughter or something. Like, that's just, it's ridiculous, you know. Just. And. Just the way the system is set up, I think it's set up for us to be slaves with inside the prison system in general. Yeah. The more people that they could just put in prison over anything ridiculous, they're going to do it, you know. Right, and you got some of these people that they look like, well, um, when, when, uh, when George Washington wrote the Declaration of Independence, you know, and all men created equal, he wasn't talking about the slaves or I should say minorities. Because at that time, we were just here as part of doing a service for them. It wasn't more of we were them like an equal as a man. So I think if I'm not mistaken, even our vote nowadays is still three-fifths of a vote. Hmm. So, Damn. you know, so for them, they don't they don't want people like me or, you know, minorities out here having the same rights as them. They feel entitled and privileged like this is their land. They feel like they, they gained it from, uh, you know, Great Britain. But the only problem is this wasn't Great Britain's land either. You know, that was your predecessor. That's why you came over to the United States, as we call it today. You know, and, you know, they called the native people Indians because when Christopher Columbia settled in the New Americas, he thought he was in India. So he called the native people Indians. Hmm. So that's a little uh, education fact for you guys. That's why I have a lot of Native American in me, you know, on both sides. So, But, uh, yeah. I mean, it's just, it's, it's crazy. And, and they feel entitled. And they look at us like, they look down upon us, like they're superior to us. But we bleed the same blood, you know. We, we, we are the species, We you know. And one thing I've noticed in some species in, in this earth is that the lighter the species are, the more poisonous they are to the species. You know, some of them like, what should we say, uh, like grasshoppers, you know, and certain insects, you know, they're poisonous. Right, wasps, yellow jackets. Yep. Well, you know, the more doctors and they're white. <laughs> you know, you know, a cure patient is a 
A cure patient is a lost patient. You know, you can't yeah. lose that money. So we just going to treat you. You know, we ain't yeah. going to cure you. We just going to treat you. Right. Makes so, sense. you know, you got to get the money. So, yeah. and it's fucked up because, you know, they're at that point, you know, when you look at a doctor, they know that they're killing you, but there's nothing they can do about it because this is how they make their money. This is how they provide for their own. So, you know, you got to remember you're in a system. You know, it's almost your robotic. You don't really have a sense of freedom. Matter of fact, the term freedom, you're dumb to think that you're free. Think about it. It's it's right there in the name. So, you know, I think uh, I agree with what both y'all are saying about how we're definitely controlled. Like we're in a prison kind of, and prison planet. Or there's a prison for your mind just as well. Like like you were saying, uh, the reincarnation belief. It's definitely it's been brought up to my attention that that that's just the belief that's been sold to us so that we don't worry so much about what we do in this life because we feel like the next life we can make up for it mm -hmm. and then and then like like a lot of things that we do we, we you know i brought up the cops earlier because i want to make sure that when we talk about uh controlling our own gun violence against each other that we also think about reforming that stuff because we can't i mean it's really saddening to me to think that people will just overlook things and just let them go and pass it on to the next authority or the next uh, president or the next whatever to do something about it. And it's really just like giving your power to, you know, the, the guard in prison to stop violence. When if you're in prison, you know better. You know you have to either take care of, your, take, take care of it yourself or get some people in there to help you take care of it. You know, but we don't see things that way as a society. We, and so many people don't agree with us either. Like my aunt, I was talking to her about this. She's a successful person. And she sees this success as something everybody can have. But then she's also worried about uh, Biden, you know, giving away, uh, making like a universal income and, and income equality because she's going to lose everything that she's gained, her and her husband. And their family, who's been working very hard, saving money, and being very responsible. She doesn't want to lose that to people like us, who have just been trying to make it by and live happy lives, and being free and independent. Um, she doesn't want to lose that. And, and there's a lot of people in our society, they don't want to lose the healthcare system, even if they, they see like a, you know, a dangerous aspect of it. Like, they don't want it to completely come and take over, but, you know, it's already come, taken over so much of our society. People don't even, people have let it slide for so long, now they don't seem to know what to do about it, or they don't feel like they can do anything about it. The same thing with the police and religion. People see, like, these bad things happening in the police department, and they just don't, we just don't feel like we can go to the city council and do anything about it, or, or have any type of impact. So we, we, we stick to this system of subservience. And I don't like to talk about it too much because I don't like to get people down. I know a lot of this gets people down, but... It's real life. <laughs> yeah. But it, it's... I mean, it's basically... You can't... You can't do anything besides get people down because you... You can't really offer solutions that everybody's going to say, Oh, yeah, that's great. And once you start to offer solutions like, Well, we need to defund this police force and start a new one. They go, what do you mean, defund? They, they, no, it's, <laughs> the media tells them it's a bad idea and all the, all the suffering that they're going to do for it. And the same thing with, with religion. Like, oh, man, we've had a bunch of pedophile priests. What, what do we do? Do we not send our kids to church anymore? Well, then be, they become, you know, if you don't have them fearing God, then they're all out of control. They become heathens. Like people would be so scared if you said if you said all the churches were gonna close tomorrow. People Yeah, yeah. But it's like you said, they, they just they grow up with some, they live with it for so long and they just become accustomed to it. They don't know how to get away. Right. They're trapped. Well we might as well like throw down our arms and give in to the medical community because I think we're gonna get a vaccine pretty soon. I with can the see chip. that coming. The chip is in the back. The, the, the microchip scene. Uh, with the chip. I mean, sometimes you just can't stop what's coming, man. You know, 
it is what it is, but hey, day by day. Mm-hmm. But we can't fold, you know, it is what it is. Um, I think everything was just planned out for us in general, you know what I'm saying? We're part of a bigger picture right here. Everything's always been planned out for years. They're just incorporating their plans already. A small piece of the puzzle. Unless we can create this army. I know that's right. Well, your podcast is the army. Unless they shut that shit down. <laughs> we we got to get off of YouTube, guys. We got to get off of YouTube. <laughs> hey, put this shit on YouTube. That's my next this step. Shit. This might be my last YouTube video because we're gone. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Have fun. I'm out too. Oh shit, I got right. Oh fuck, I got two cups and my legs are tired. Oh fuck. Yeah. Hey, this shit cool, but just uh, talking about some shit like yeah, this, you know what I'm saying? Yeah.